Hi guys and welcome back and welcome back to a shambles going on in the back of this car yeah this is a bit of a mess what I'm doing is I'm trying to take the wiring loom that I made up a, a year or two ago for the BMS and I'm trying to re-splice it into the battery box that I'm or the battery setup that I that I have now. A couple of years ago, year and a half ago or so, I took the original Volkswagen battery module connectors. As you can see, there's one unplugged in over there. Uh, I took them and cut the wires to something like this length, and then added these connectors, which are just cheap connectors you can buy off eBay and I put a number on each of the the wires now the reason I did that was so that I would know what module this connected to so the module number was on here and the cell numbers were here on these little uh, little markers so that was fine it worked for the setup that I was using it for at the time but I've had to change things around quite a bit so these are no longer um, they're no longer really useful to me uh, basically what I'm having to do is to remake all of the uh, the cables and re-spline, re-patch everything and basically rewire the, the loom for the BMS setup so what I did was I got some Find it. I got some microphone multi-core. Now I had happened to have this lying about the house from an old projects I did years ago. So I have microphone multi-core, which for BMS wiring is not ideal, but it's not the worst. And the reason I say that is because of the way I'm actually using it. Now, if I was using a single core for each cell that would not be good because the the cores the the cores in the microphone cable are quite light they're certainly lighter than the original bms wiring so i'm not doing that what i'm doing is i'm using two cores so in each each one of these gray cables has two cores in it and i'm using both of those twisting them together and putting them through to a single wire on the bms when i do that i put I'm soldering the connection and then putting a small heat shrink over the solder connection and then I'm putting a larger heat shrink over the entire uh, thing so this is the each each connection will be double insulated with heat shrink it's um, each of the wires is separately insulated Let's see if we can find a piece of wire for you so as you can see each core is individually insulated it then has um, an interference shield over that and then that's insulated again so each of these cores is double insulated and it comes with uh, a sh with shielding so hopefully that will help to prevent interference on the on the the lines we'll just have to wait and see how that works out but it is high quality cable so I'm happy that that's going to be okay for what I'm using it for uh, I know there's going to be potentially a high voltage on these cables because the BMS cables uh, coming from the most positive end of the battery pack will be at that full bat battery pack voltage so that's why it needs to be well insulated so it's good thick insulation on the outer sheath and each of the cores like I said is, is um, double insulated as well so I'm happy enough that the cable is going to be sufficiently safe for what I'm using it for and the complication that I've got here is trying to figure out how to um, to make sure the connections are correct so what I've got is at the battery end I have like I said cut off the I've cut off this 
end of the connection kept the cell numbers and soldered the wires directly to the the uh, microphone cable at the other end what I'm doing is I am splicing it into the original Nissan Leaf BMS connections and I actually when I was doing this originally I had the, the numbers at this end as well so I'm keeping those numbers as well so the number at this end should match the number at this end so that should be all good and then it's just a matter of making sure whenever I plug those into the battery modules that I'm getting the correct voltages at the, the modules, at, getting the correct voltage at this end. Now to do that, at some stage in the last while I made up a spreadsheet with the connector number. This is uh, LB15 is this connector. As you can see I've already written on it, LB15. So this LB15 is this connector and there are some parts in the connector which have not been populated and if you look at the back of the, the connector there are a couple of places where there are no cables going in so that enables me to confirm I'm at the right place and connecting in the right way and what I did was I also set up the spreadsheet in such a way that if I put in the voltage of a single cell I can then pick up what the voltages should be at each of the connectors. Now, this is when I have the entire battery pack connected. So at this point, I can't get the exact correct voltages. Basically, I decided that I would need to get this loom made up before connecting the other end, this end. To the battery modules because once these are connected to the battery modules and the battery modules are in, in situation then we've got high voltages there and massive potential for current therefore if I was to just cut through the wires or touch them or anything it would cause a short and all sorts of problems so to try and avoid that I'm trying to make sure these are all uh, made up before I actually connect the, um, the other end to the battery modules this, is, by the way, is for this cable is going to the fuel tank battery box. I have another one to make up identical to that, and I've already got one going to the the uh, battery box, which is underneath this box in the cubby hole under this box. So that's already made up, and it's already connected. So I can actually pick up voltages here from those battery modules. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. Uh, slow progress but we're getting there I'm gonna go and get the other cable now and start getting it spliced in the plan is to put the I'll swing it around a wee bit uh, hopefully you can see that the plan is to put the the BMS in this corner now at, whenever this uh, when the plastic cover goes on the the side there the, pan, the plastic panel goes on the side there may or may not be enough room for the BMS to go in behind it, I'm not sure. But I'm more than happy hacking into that plastic panel. It's, it's not particularly pretty anyway. Um, we'll box it in some way to make it look like it's meant to be there. So anyway, that, that's not an issue. There's loads of space here for the BMS. As you can see, I've also got these wires coming out of the lower battery box. Below this, I'm going to have another couple coming out of the far one. These are temperature sensor wires and these are I can't remember the, the uh, model number for the for the temperature sensors but they're Dallas something 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 temperature sensors and the way they work is you can have four five six ten whatever number you want all connected in parallel these all go back to an ESP32 or a, an Arduino and with a little bit of programming you can pick up the temperatures in all of the temperature sensors so these are pretty handy so we'll get the other cable and we'll get started so this is cable number two that's going to the 
uh, fuel tank battery box. I only needed a single cable going to the one below here because there's four small modules, each of them with two cells. So there's eight, eight cells in total. So I was able to use a single one of these cables for that, but for the fuel tank battery box, because it has four of the larger modules, then I need, uh, I need to double up. So as you can see, I've already got this end made up. So I need to now go and start uh, the other end. Strip it back as soon as this one is. Printed out this uh, photograph of the battery box and put up the these are the, the cell numbers that are going to be in the fuel tank and these are the cell numbers that are going in the cubby hole battery box. So those are already connected. These ones are already connected, so now I have to do these these two. So what I need to do now is to look at these, these these connections, these would have been going to the batteries and when I was testing them in my office. So I need to look for numbers 61, 2, 3 and 4. So 61, 2, 3 and 4. So this is the, the end that we're going to be working with. I know that these were correct at the time when I tested them because it all worked. So I'm hoping that nothing has changed and that will stay the case. Uh, the thing is, because the shape of the battery pack has changed so much, some of these are going to be four-way and some are the, the, uh, the smaller two-way. And they're not necessarily going to, to match from, from what they were before. 60, cell number 68 and Seven originally went to a small battery module. Now, because everything has changed around, they may be a large module, so I can't use these connections anyway. So, may as well just cut them off, wire them in directly, and um, at this end, we're still able to plug it into the battery module because this is uh, this end has a, a plug on it as well. This is the original Volkswagen plug. So now I have these stripped off, I found the module I was looking for, which was, like I said, 61, 2, 3, and 4. 61, 62, 63, 64. Right, so I need to cut these wires at a length, which is the same as the other ones. So I'm going to slide these down. So all those numbers are now closer to the the... BMS connector and I can go ahead and cut these wires. And I can safely cut them because they're not connected to any batteries at the moment. So we'll start with 61 and we'll go to cable number one in this 8 core. If this has been used for a microphone then this would be microphone one, microphone two, and so on because they're all labelled. Twist these together because they've been doubled up and bend over the end to form a little hook. <clears throat> 
This one, I'll put on some insulation. And uh, a smaller one. Strip the end. And also form a little hook. And here we're using my trusty TS100 soldering iron, which is a fantastic soldering iron. And I'll put a link in the description where you can get these. These are amazing things. They will either run off 12 volts, from 12 volts to 24 volts, I think is the, um, maybe up to 30, I'm not sure the exact, the top voltage, but uh, I think I'm running this currently at 19 volts. So obviously the higher the voltage, the more power you get. I'll bump it up to 400 degrees C because that's what I need for what I'm doing here. So, these little hooks that I just made, tighten them up. Need something to raise that a little. little. Right. So that is now. Those are now have a physical hook hooked on together. <laughs> is asking my dog is he being naughty and the answer is yes. So quick solder. And that's done. Sometimes I give give them a wee squeeze with a pair of pliers because you do occasionally get sharp edges sticking out. And I do not want the um, he shrink to be compromised with sharp edges. So put that over there. Bit of heat. And then a longer one. Going over both. So that's how I'm doing it. Now I've got another eight more to do. Sorry, another seven more to do. And that would be this cable made up. So that was 61, look for 62 is blue and red. I know there's various ways of splicing cables and some are stronger than others. Some people say just have the two side by side and solder them. For me this has got to be the strongest because you have a physical connection where the two are hooked around each other. Plus you have the solder connection. So you got both. And because of the way I'm doing it, it's small enough that um, it's not an issue with a big lumpy bump bulbous bit. Okay, so that's all of those made up now. Hello guys, Ali Bro from the future here. This video was made a few weeks ago and when I was going back over it again I realised I made a stupid mistake. If you were following what I was doing with this diagram, I was showing you that this was uh, the most negative cell number 96 and it went down 95, 94, 3, 2, 1, 0 and so on. And what I had done is, for reasons I don't fully understand because I don't remember why this was stupid, 
I had figured that the cables coming from the uh, the fuel tank battery box were going to connect in here. And the numbers that I had put into this were all relevant to the the uh, battery box connections coming into here. But that's stupid. The battery box connections are going in between here. So well, not everything, but most of what I've just shown you is wrong. I'm going to have to redo it again, so yeah, it's a pain. <sighs> Slow process, I'll not make you suffer watching me doing it again. But yeah, I'm going to have to remake most of those connections. From here on would be fine, but I haven't made them yet, so that doesn't actually count. Uh, the ones that are going down into the cubbyhole battery box, they're fine. It's the ones going to the fuel tank battery box which are wrong. So that's 16 of those leads I will have to cut and remake and re-patch. Um, Basically what would have happened is they would have ended up in the wrong point in this connector. So I need to uh, remake them. The only alternative to doing that is to actually physically put the battery connections from the fuel tank battery box into here. And as you can see, there's just really not enough space to do that. Um, so I'm not going to. I'm going to fix the issue and do it right. Well, it was actually only when I was... I can't remember why. Something to do with the, the, the trying to ensure it was getting the numbers correct at the front of the car. That I started actually putting stickers onto each battery, as you can see. And writing the numbers down on them. And it was when it got to this point I went, uh, hang on a second, <laughs> something's not right. So yeah, it's just one of those stupid things. But I'm very glad I decided to do this, to actually mark each of the modules so that I know exactly where each uh, cable should go to. But it's one of those things, I'll, it'll take me a few hours, but it's not the end of the world. Back to the video. So the idea then is that this connector which now has the, the modules from below this large box and the two for the fuel tank. This is now safe to just sort of leave here and I can plug in the fuel tank connectors at the other end. These connections will then become live but that's okay because it's you know everything is, is I don't have to cut any more wires and that should be all safe enough. Um, I will use, uh, can't remember the name of the tape, but some soft um, felt type tape to tape this all up and tidy it all up. But for now I just want to leave it as it is and go ahead and install the fuel tank, the fuel tank battery box. That's the, the next on the agenda. Hi guys, Future Ollie Bro butting in again with a sneak preview of what's going on under the, the bonnet. Uh, this video is, has already gone over 20 minutes so I've decided just to cut it here and the next one will be the installation of the fuel tank battery box. In the meantime, please feel free to check out the links in the description below. Those are affiliate links, so if you click on a link and then subsequently make a purchase, I will get a small commission. It doesn't cost you a penny more, but it does help to support the channel. So appreciate that if you uh, could help out there. And uh, as the great man said, if you have been, thank you for watching. Bye for now.